and called many names the Fall Classic, the greatest bodybuilding show on earth. The Olympia is where all the world's men. Hey y'all, this officially starts the journey. So this whole documentary will walk you through what my days look like day in, day out. It's about 200 pounds of luggage. Have that all ready to go for this move to Arizona with my coach, which happens every single year, um, about eight weeks out from the Olympia. So the reason we kind of go through it like this is because my coach likes to see everything that I do every single day. Controls my training, my food, which can switch every single day of the week. So he just texts it to me. Uh, this is our yearly ritual. Uh, prior to going to the Olympia for her to go out and spend the time with her coach. Bodybuilding started in our family, oh, about the 1990s, late 1990s. Um, my wife and I decided to do a Body for Life competition and um, kind of transform our bodies over a, a period of time to see if we could actually win some prizes. So we started doing this program and uh, we began getting in such good shape that ultimately we ended up becoming uh, natural bodybuilders. Going to the shows is what really got me into the sport because I would look up and I had this obsession with rhinestones and heels. So that's when figure had just come out and I looked up and I saw the rhinestones and the heels and everybody looked so pretty. And I already had muscle, I always had shoulders, I always had legs, I always had abs. So it was like something that just came natural to me and I looked up and I said, I wanna look like that. And that's when I started training. I decided I wanted to compete at 13. And then everybody told me, oh, you're too young, you're too young. Wait a second, are you sure? When Sydney first decided she wanted to compete, I was really surprised, um, but I knew she wasn't going to change her mind. When I realized she was serious, I took it seriously. So we made sure she had a proper diet, the proper supplements. We went to the gym together and we practiced, practiced, practiced. At the time I was a junk food junkie. I had high cholesterol at 12. I was about to be put on medicine. My mom was like, no, she's not gonna go on medicine. She'll, she'll change her diet. That's kind of how it all took off. But I had been going to shows since I was six years old, watching my parents on stage and by the time I was 13 I'd probably gone to 50 plus shows and one day I was in the kitchen and I said hmm Sydney's gonna be Miss Olympia just out the fluke it just came to my spirit she's gonna be Miss Olympia however I didn't realize she would place become Miss Olympia so soon um, but I knew she had the work ethics I knew she had the dedication so I went ahead and helped her put everything in place for the show. We plan on getting her sued and practice the pose and studying different things, um, get her diet in place. Um, I didn't have much of a problem with it. I thought it was, it was interesting, it was nice. Uh, we were on the competition stage at the same time. So it was just going to be a, kind of a family endeavor and it was giving her something that I could actually, as a father, a uh, father of a young woman, such that I can make sure I know exactly where she is, what she's doing, when she's doing it, and so forth. So it was a very positive thing for her to be taking care of her body um, at such a, a very early age. She placed ninth in the show, and she wanted to know, well, why did I place ninth? And then I told her the reason why, and she said, oh, Mom, you're just being negative. I said, Cindy, I know what I'm talking about. Needless to say, she listened to her mom, and three months later, at the age of 15, she turned pro. She just had a mind of her own, a will of her own. Um, she also had a, a special talent in that she was very dexterous, very good with her hands. She could repair anything, could fix anything. She was like a, a little uh, mini mechanic, uh, fixing things around the house and things of that nature. But she just uh, has always had that drive and uh, just, just didn't seem to have any fear in her. It, it comes from a nurturing environment, her just understanding that, you know, all things are possible. Nowadays, you know, people uh, grow up in environments where they're gonna look for to get a certificate or something like that. We didn't do certificates in my house. So she came up with a different sense of values. So she, she never had a problem with getting out there and deciding that she was gonna do a thing. Um, and that was the, the thing that's most impressive about her. So the biggest, biggest change for me was getting a coach who knew what I wanted to do, had the same drive I have and had, and wanted me to succeed as much as they wanted to succeed. That's been crucial. And also having the knowledge that I didn't have, because I didn't know anything, like we said, I was winging it. We were winging it. We didn't know anything about anything, but we just knew 
what to do in terms of getting prepared in terms of her body, in terms of her mind, in terms of the aesthetics of everything. Um, then one day um, she asked me to contact the coach that she has now. So we needed somebody because we knew there was a key that was missing in the nutrition and the, the training styles of what my coach has really instilled in me and I've kind of taken and, and run with that. So the biggest part that I am really grateful for is for my coach and for my mom backing him and, and my whole team that has really come together. Uh, my name is Damian Segovia and I build champions. Hmm, Sydney and I met, I don't remember what year it was, at the Olympia Gala. It was me and my friend. We were at our second Olympia and we were looking around for seats. There was no other seats at the Olympia Gala, nowhere to be seen. And I looked around, I said, hey girl, there's two seats right here. And I sat down in one and she sat across in the other. And it just so happened that next to me were Damien Segovia and Whitney Jones. And I was like, ooh. I bet go for it. So I rolled, rolled the dice and talked to her and her mom. And, and then that's when he spoke and I said, okay, didn't think anything of it. Everything else was history from that point. When, when I realized that he was a good person and that he was going to treat her like a true athlete, I said, this is a person for her. And she's been with him since then. So when Sid asked me to speak to her mom, honestly, I was okay with it because as a coach, regardless if you're online or in person, you're still only around that athlete for a few hours max per day. And it's the people that are around that athlete that are gonna allow that person to be successful or not. So we're driving to the airport now, taking Sydney to meet with her coach. And I guess my feelings are always sort of strange because I know she's gonna be gone for two months and we spend so much time together. So I'm always a little sad. It's always a sense of anticipation for me because she always looks markedly different uh, when we step off the plane and we get to see her for the first time and that's when that oh damn moment kind of hits you. <laughs> it's like okay she really put all gas no brakes. something this heat never gets old when you step off you see a girl glistening after a four-hour flight but good lord like this heat is hot so one of the most important things about being successful especially in this sport and in life in general is consistency i don't change anything once i have something set the plan is the plan and i make sure that i stick to that accordingly when i'm switching time zones everything stays based on easter standard time my meals stay the same, I get my chicken from the same place, my beef from the same places. I don't allow other variables that can affect my future to come into play and potentially change what I want to accomplish. Yeah, I make sure to shop in bulk so I don't have to spend too much time repeatedly going in and out of stores, in and out of stores. And this is my body work, guys. Hey, Mr. Johnny. How's everybody doing out there? So body work is extremely important. Body work, what that means is your massages, your gusha therapists, your dry needling people, anything that's there to help you recover and loosen up muscles, break down the fascia, break down knots. So if you have scoliosis and lordosis like myself, in the short legs, certain muscles fire more than the others. And of course, that'll make one side look different than the other. And especially for my category, symmetry is everything. The difference in working on bodybuilding athletes versus regular athletes, bodybuilders, almost like track and gymnasts, their muscles are pretty wound up, which they need to be due to their explosion and fast twitch muscles. It takes a little bit more time to loosen everything up. If you're getting body work done, you want to stay on it and continue it throughout your entire improvement season and within the season so that your body is not in shock when it comes time to perform at its best. So it is 5.45 in the morning. I usually get about 5.30, get moving, get to the gym, and get ready for a cardio party. The best part about getting up so early is there's literally nobody on the road. We're about um, nine weeks out, so nine weeks out, so I still don't have cardio on Fridays or Sundays, so that'll probably change very quickly. <laughs> Drive in, kill the workout, come back home, eat, and that's pretty much how every day goes. <laughs> I enjoy being in the gym 
very often. I enjoy the cardio. I enjoy the life. There's nothing about competing that takes me away from my regular life. It is a, a huge part of it, and I've learned to let it mesh perfectly. I don't miss out on family gatherings. I don't do any of that stuff that people tend to complain about because I've mastered my craft and I've mastered what it's like to actually make this a lifestyle versus just competing for a show. So the most important part about traveling to Arizona for me is really just getting rid of any distractions. I just like to zone in on me and this is the part where I actually really focus on myself. So it's something we've always done and I am such a detailed person that it's like I feel like I, I need her there so I can make sure everything goes as perfectly as possible. Um, Sid being a natural athlete is much different than coaching other athletes because of the simple fact that we, we, don't, we can't rely on anything else but hard work. We can't rely on anything else but just doing what we need to do day in, day out, minute by minute, hour by hour. Athletes don't change things that they've done when they find success. It don't matter from like the same way you do something, how you wear a sock. It's, it's you, you create these things in your head that you, you have to adhere to because you almost feel like you're not giving it your all if you don't. She recently got married. Uh, there was never a doubt in my mind she would still be there. People always ask me, hey, how's Sid's husband with her coming out to AZ? I don't think it matters. That's just the way it was before they got married and that's the way it's going to be after. Okay, so here's one of my favorite meals. Lots of beef, sweet potato, green beans, and then got some cashews over here. My water and my husband. Baby, say hey. Uh. <laughs> Baby, how does it feel to have me gone for two whole months? Tell the people. Uh, I would say it just it takes an adjustment. The first, you know, the first week or two, it has it has to set in. So you kind of just you know you go with the the you go with the motion or the flow of the day, and then it's always needed. You know, you don't want to be up under your spouse. Um. 24 7 so those little you know these little periods sometimes i think it's very healthy for both individuals to give them the time and like the little the space they need um so we just have to get creative you know uh i do like movie nights where i try to kick in some of my my, my tech savvy and, and and share a screen and share some audio um so we can watch a movie at the same time we've we've you know done this for such a long time now this entire process you know we're just both used to it um and it just comes with the territory of competing. Now at the same time, I'm focusing on myself, but also I'm still focusing on my clients. Um, up until three weeks out from the show, I tend to cut my calendar then so I can really just focus on me. And what I noticed last year is the amount of energy and time I pour into my clients, once I have that back within the last three weeks, it allowed my workouts to truly flourish, like more than ever before. Some people always say something has to suffer and I don't believe that. What suffers is what you don't really want. Sunday at about 6 a.m. I got my um, massage every Sunday at 7 a.m. The massage will be about an hour to an hour and a half. And then I'll go do my ice bath today too. So on Sundays, I'd rather get my steps in outside, see the nature, get the sunlight, get some vitamin D. Um, but in Arizona, it gets a little tricky. I am not getting no steps in and nobody's weather at 150 degrees and I wear black all the time so I'm like nah. So I'm in a very, very unique position just in terms of what I'm trying to attain in terms of making world history in my category and eventually in the sport altogether. So in order to do that, you have to be very meticulous and very detailed and very humble. It's the ability to look and say, hey, you're not perfect. Let me pick this apart. Let me pick this apart. Let me pick this apart. And I think when you when you think like that and you recognize that something can always be better no matter what place you've got, you gotta go through the details. It forces you to be better. Sid has 
an expectation to uh, for herself that's higher than anyone's expectations ever going to be including mine which is extremely hard to do so every year she's always trying to find a way to do something better and it could be the smallest detail that most athletes don't don't really worry about but you have to understand when you're at the level she's at we're dealing with like quarter percents we're not dealing like we're trying to get five percent better ten we're dealing with quarters we're, we're trying to get like a quarter percent better every year because she's already so great and already so almost complete that we have to find something every year to focus on so she finds her things she focuses on i find things i want to focus on and and we show up every year better and better with both being a little bit more crazy about what we expect from one another Loyalty beats a hundred million any day yeah. And hard work beats a nigga chillin' many say To yeah. move out and make a way I did the move make a way Said I was overnight but let's see how these niggas hate today Cause yeah. I ain't just Had to wait my turn, I didn't hate I went from scrapping for them scraps to having dinner plates Now I tell Leaf to push the button, make the ceiling wait Knowing that came, came from nothing, got me feeling great Knowing they counted, then I wasn't, got me feeling great Then these in the, in the cousins got me feeling great She wanna, wanna cause I'm buzzing, got me feeling great So like I told her, bitch, I'm coming and I'm feeling great Feeling great, feeling great, man, I'm feeling great Feeling great, feeling great, man, I'm feeling great Feeling great Winning is slim, uh -huh. but when you're his...